to the Energy Star Talk LP. Nice to have you here. Thank you. It's great to be here. How are you? I'm very good. Very good. I think I'm uh, I'm over my my tired jet lag situation, sort of. You came here yesterday to Berlin. Yeah, is I've been in Italy for a couple of days. Is it your this. first time here in Berlin? Uh, my second time in Berlin. I I was very. It was kind of fast the first time, but um, yeah, I love it here. I've been I've been wanting to spend a little more time here. I have tonight off, and I have a friend who comes here a lot that's going to take me out. So I'm excited. Yeah, so that's nice. You have some time to see the city. Yeah. And It's great. Do you know some German words when you have a friend here? He's living here? I only no, he's not living here. He's a songwriter as well and uh he just comes out here all the time and he loves it. So he was like, Let me take you out. Um I don't know any German words except for Danke and Hallo. <laughs> and I thought it was funny, like I'm like, How do you say hello? Hello. Good. Now that we got that over with. And you just know need to know uh, I I ich will ein Bier. Which what is it called? I want a beer. Oh yeah, yeah, say it. Say it. Ich will ein Bier. Or you can say <laughs> ein Bier bitte. I be bitter? Ein Bier bitte. Ein Bier bitte. All right, cool. Yeah. Ein Bier bitte. Wow. You made my whole stay here much better. <laughs> um your song Lost on You is a big hit around the world. It's uh, already number one in Greek. Or something yeah <laughs> so great in Greece and Italy and Romania and I think Israel and Turkey or something like that I don't know it's cool everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> um, can you remember the first moment when you maybe heard it on the radio first or when when, when you n you know I have not heard it on the radio yet no that always happens no. to me though I mean not that I've had anything this played this much But usually I can tell when, when friends are hitting me up. Like I have friends that are, for some reason I have a ton of friends in Italy right now and they're all like, I keep hearing you. So <laughs> they're almost annoyed. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> tell us um, the story behind the song. What is it about? Uh, well, you know, I mean, it's about a failed relationship, but it was it was about the relationship basically um, before you know it's failed, like you haven't, you know, and you haven't given up on it at all in your mind, you know, you just, you're, you, you know, like you don't feel well about it, but it's, you haven't, it, like, you can't even think about it ending. You'd be like, oh my God, no, it's not going to end. That, that's not going to happen. But this is, you know, it's definitely messed up right now. So it was like that feeling and the kind of, I'm basically in it, I think just kind of, sort of begging the person not to, you know, not to keep doing, not to keep not understanding what they're doing to this relationship, you know. So that is always good for songwriting, right? Yeah, always, like for sure. Problems. I think, yeah, and I think it's like, you know, once you, I, I, you know, not because I'm awesome, just because I'm lucky. I hadn't really been broken up with before. <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, you know, no one's ever broken up with me before. <laughs> But, um... It was like, you know, I think when, you know, when people say, like, what would you rather be broken up with or break up with someone? And, and it is a very helpless feeling too, breaking up with someone and not wanting to be with them anymore. But um, I think definitely the more helpless thing would be being broken up with because you really don't have a choice. You know, like you're just like, you can't, there's nothing you can do. Mm. You know? um, some people might also know you from uh, other songs. Because you also writing songs for artists like Rihanna, Christina Aguilera. Um, how did that? How did that come? That you also write for for others? Um, I think you know what the funny part is is that I it, it came from writing so many songs for myself that never got out there that nobody wanted at the time, and then suddenly they got picked for other artists, and I was like, oh, this is so ironic when they're like, yeah, you don't have a song. Uh, we don't know what song to put out of yours. We'll just take your songs and give them to somebody else, which is, you know, it's kind of like a bit of a, you know, a mind insert expletive right there. Um, but I think, uh, you know, it really, I, I, when I started writing so many songs, I realized that I could. It was like something I realized I could do. And then I just really buckled down and, and started doing that because I just felt like, I enjoyed it and it was very satisfying and um, you know you have to have a certain kind of uh, strong stomach for it in some ways because I think a lot of people especially in art I notice I don't know about everybody but I feel like the people that I know and myself it's like rejection cuts very deep 
you know, people, like if you say you don't like something of someone's artistically, it could kill them. <laughs> like literally, you know, it's like very, um, it's a very deep thing to, um, cause you're exposing like yourself on a very deep level. And if someone isn't into it, it's, it's pretty devastating, you know? So, um, but I, what I think songwriting made me very strong because you would think you wrote something that was great. And, uh, and then, you know, suddenly it'd be like, eh. I mean, and even, even if you have written something great, like that's, that's why you have to be strong. Like when I wrote Lost on You, I wrote it two years ago. Now people have said it, like people around in my circle, my friends told me it was like really good, stuff like that. I thought it was really good, but you know, I was on a, I was on another record label before I was on this record label and you know, uh, a lot of, a lot of people had left the label. So and and they were very behind me but the new people wanted to hear my new stuff to see if they were going to keep going mm -hmm. with me and i played them that song amongst others that are doing well and they dropped me <laughs> so and that's not a bad thing you know very very good things happen after that but i'm just saying for people out there who write songs or do anything you know um the fact that it that song even a hit song that i have right now that i'm enjoying the fruits of that labor that was rejected <laughs> you know mm -hmm. so that's what i feel like is a huge lesson to me you know for any artist is that you know you're gonna be rejected being rejected is the best thing that could ever happen to you if you're ever gonna actually do be an artist so i can imagine that it's a kind of a strange feeling to give away your babies mm -hmm. to to other ones yeah i mean I, yes and no i mean i think to me it's the ultimate form of connection and communication it's like it's like passing along a story like you know in ancient times you're giving someone a story and then they're taking it and giving their interpretation of it and mm -hmm. I think that's really beautiful you know because fans are always interpreting songs but it's really it's an interesting kind of um, permutation of a song to give it to another artist that then takes their their soul and their energy and 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 sings it a certain way and gives it a, a different interpretation. I think that's really cool. Have there been an interpretation you didn't like? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, actually, and I don't let them go. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like I had, I had someone. I had this song that I wrote uh, for CeeLo, kind of, and then, um, and the only other artist that I could picture it doing it was like uh, Amy Winehouse, and unfortunately, as we know, but um, and in my head, you know, not that they wanted to do it. I'm just saying, in my head, I felt like they had the the depth and the and the right kind of humor in their in their way and I might do it myself at some point but um, yeah somebody sent me a, a, a you know a song a version of it by like a a, a very young woman um, it was really good but um, it just like it had none of the interpretation was like completely wrong because <laughs> I just felt like she just didn't she didn't understand what I was saying you know what I mean she you also spoke it. a different language so she you know so it was maybe it was that but I just it was just wrong for the song and I just felt bad but I was like no I can't you know sorry you know and I, yeah. it wasn't nothing personal I just you know I just like if I hear something that is my song and it's absolutely wrong to me and it's not getting the song across at all I, I will stop it <laughs> and do you write in a different way when you write for others and not for yourself uh, I do I, I I do and I don't I try not to but I feel like um, when I know I'm writing for somebody else sometimes I try to uh, interpret what they're going through or, or what I think they're going through like I had this interesting funny moment I I I wrote a song for Leona Lewis when I wasn't not with her and then I wrote a song with her and I was uh and I didn't want to tell her and I had read somewhere that she went through this breakup so I'd written this song about like you know the the horribleness of it and um I mean I don't want to give anything away I, she probably won't even remember but I was like I was trying to get into like you know so it's really hard right she's like no, it was great. It was like the best thing that ever happened to me. I was like, you know, like here I am, like just deciding you felt like this. And then you're like, yeah, no, that's not how I felt. So that was funny to me. And I was like, I, I kind of like not learned my lesson, but I was like, oh, OK, yeah, you never know. That's why I think I like to write more, not try to get into the artist's head, because most of the songs that 
have gotten cut by other artists. Not the, not the Rihanna one. I wrote that specifically for her. But uh, most of the songs that get cut by other artists, I wrote for myself. I think that's the best way, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. Um, have you met some of the the artists you wrote for? Uh, not really. No. I mean, I yeah, I met Leona Lewis. Uh, I met. Um, Gosh, I met. I wrote a song for Joe Walsh from the Eagles. I didn't meet him. Actually, no. I did. I no. I talked to him on the phone. <laughs> uh, no, I haven't. I have to say, the majority I have not met. No. And who's the yeah. coolest person you ever met? Who's the coolest person ever? Oh, Robert Plant. Who? Yeah, it's just like, it's bizarre. He's like meeting the king, you know. Yeah. It's cool. Can imagine. Have you always wanted to be a musician, or was there no, first? No, I. You know, I grew up in a family of like lawyers and doctors and so I thought I was going to be a doctor my brother my older brother's a doctor and um I don't know I yeah I didn't at all my family it wasn't like something you did it was something you did as a hobby kind of and then uh, my mom passed away when I was a teenager and I just was like you know what I think I've gotten the most um joy and the best um version of myself doing music and Maybe I will. I, I I couldn't believe it. Like I couldn't wrap my head around like being like I'm going to be a musician. You know what I mean? Like you're not going to go to college. Nope, going to be a musician. Where are you going to go? I don't know. <laughs> like, I had no idea. I just like drop kicked myself into New York City in the heart of New York City and just was like, all right, here we go. And you started with with your own songs on or with yeah. I started writing my own songs. I mean, you know, and that was the interesting thing because like back in the day, I would write you know ten to 13 songs a year and be like these are amazing I'm going to put these on a disc and I'm going to put them out and I'm going to be huge you know <laughs> of course <laughs> and then when I yeah and then when I signed to a major label finally and they like made me write all these songs or like you know put me in the position to write all these songs I was like writing like 65 75 songs a year for the two years three years and uh I was like, ah, oh. you know, and like, and, and no record even came out on that, you know, it's like, so now that's when I, I think that's when I was like, like I said earlier that I was like, okay, I could be a songwriter and, and I enjoy it enough and I can take it the, the sheer volume and not, um, be, uh, discouraged if it's, if they don't get picked up, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Your EP is out uh, already here, um, and an album is coming this year. Yes, you already have a release date. Uh, I don't have a release date, but I have all the songs. You know, I just gotta get them all compiled together. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm excited. I have some like, even very recently, I just wrote some really, really dope songs. I'm excited. So I guess your fans are excited too. I hope so. You never know. They might be like, "What is this?" What can can they expect? I ordered pizza. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, just more of the same, you know. Like uh, maybe there's a couple of like you know uh, maybe a little more upbeat stuff. Not you know, but you know it's the same. I'm I'm like yeah. I'm like uh, woo woo. <laughs> I'm I'm the same. I'm always like you know. I'm like kind of like happy sad in a way. You know, um, like everybody. I just have I I'm I'm moody. You know, and uh, I mean, with a with a basic, a basic like happiness like level. You know, I'm lucky, um, but I definitely I'm very emotional. So I go up and down, and I, I, I try to like embrace the different emotions now. You know, I don't mm -hmm. really, um, you know, I don't think it's like I don't think it's productive or um, possible to just be like. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> you, know, like, you gotta like go down a little yeah. you know so i mean you know there's like uh everybody's got to got to get their rhythm and not get you know got to be a little buddhist about it it's like not get too down or too up i prefer to not to get too down i love to get up you know what <laughs> i mean like you know let's do it let's do this i have to say i love um muddy waters from from the ep oh thank you thank you so much really great, great song. thank you so what's coming up next on your on your list are uh, there any touring plans in yes. germany yeah uh yeah I, i'm gonna like this is how it usually goes with it you know like i start doing things like this and uh and you know the song the song hasn't really even come out here yet but i think um has it no lost on you has it it's out for oh okay 
Oh, I don't know. I thought a month or so. Ah, okay, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For some reason, someone you're, told me the like official top fifty in the really? airplay charts. Oh, nice. The hey, there so. you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it just was starting here, um, and. Um, yeah, I mean it's been like it's been like number one in Greece for like seventeen or eighteen <laughs> weeks or something, which is like thank you, Greece, I love you. Anyway, but um, but yeah, so um, I feel like um, I'll be back like before the end of the year to do a show for sure. Cool. Yeah. So we're looking for that. Yeah. And good luck. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for your. Thank you. Thank you.